Hello. Today we're going to be talking about the process of photosynthesis, beginning with wavelength and pigments. Light is a form of energy known as electromagnetic radiation, which travels in rhythmic waves similar to the ripples formed by dropping something into a pond. However, electromagnetic waves are disturbances of electric and magnetic fields rather than a medium such as water. Wavelength is the distance between the crests of electromagnetic waves. It can range from less than a nanometer for gamma rays to over a kilometer for radio waves. This range of radiation forms the electromagnetic spectrum. In this unit, we will focus on radiation known as visible light, a narrow band from about 380 nanometers to 750 nanometers in wavelength, which can be detected as various colors by the human eye. This part of the spectrum that we can see is what drives photosynthesis. As light meets matter, it is either reflected, transmitted, or absorbed. The substances responsible for the absorption of visible light are called pigments. Different pigments absorb light of different wavelengths, causing the wavelengths absorbed to disappear. If a pigment were to be illuminated by a white light, the color we see would be the one most reflected by the pigment. For this reason, we see leaves as green due to the chlorophyll in plants absorbing violet blue and red light while transmitting and reflecting green light. Some examples of pigments abundant in chloroplasts are chlorophyll A, a key light capturing pigment that directly participates in light reactions, chlorophyll B, an accessory pigment, and another separate group of accessory pigments called carotenoids. Now let's go more in depth into the photosynthesis cycle. There are two processes in the photosynthesis cycle. First, the light reaction process, and then the Calvin cycle. I will be focusing on the light reaction. The light reaction process mostly occurs in the thylakoid membrane. The main purpose of the light reaction process is to intake light energy from the sun to create organic molecules like ATP and NADPH, which is needed to help run the Calvin cycle. There are four main parts of the light reaction process. First, light absorption of photosystem two. Second, ATP synthesis. Third, light absorption of photosystem one. And finally, NADPH formation. During the first part of the light reaction process, which is the light absorption of photosystem two, the light energy from the sun is absorbed by one of the many pigments in photosystem two, where the energy is passed inward from pigment to pigment until it reaches the reaction core. Then the energy is transferred to P60, boosting an electron to a high energy level. Then the high energy electron is passed to an acceptor molecule and is replaced with an electron from water. The splitting of the water releases O2 that we breathe. The second part of the light reaction process is ATP synthesis, where the high energy electrons travels down an electron transport chain, which causes it to lose, lose energy as it goes. Some of the released energy drives pumping of H plus ions from the stroma into the thylakoid interior, building a gradient. As the H plus ions flow down their gradient and into the stroma, they pass, they pass through the ATP synthes synthase enzyme driving ATP production in a process known as chemiosmosis. The light absorption of photosystem 1 is very similar to photosystem 2, though instead the electron arrives, arrives with very low energy, similar to photosystem 2, though when the light energy is absorbed by pigments and passed inward to the reaction center, the P700 is boosted to a very high energy level instead of the P680 which is transferred by an acceptor molecule. Then the special pairs that were missing is replaced by the new electron from the photosystem too. The final stage of the light reaction process is the formation of NADPH. This occurs when high en the high energy electron travels down a short second leg of the electron transport chain. At the end of the chain, the electron is passed to NADP plus along with a second electron from the same pathway to make NADPH. 
In the carbon fixation phase, three carbon dioxide molecules are attached to five ribulose biphosphates. This process is catalyzed by an enzyme called Rubisco. Three six carbons are formed from this reaction that immediately split into six total molecules of three phosphoglycerates because the six carbon is so unstable. In the reduction phase, the three phosphoglycerates gain an extra phosphate group from the conversion of ATP to ADP, forming six molecules of 1,3-biphosphoglycerates. NADPH then reduces the carboxyl group on the 1,3-biphosphoglycerates to an aldehyde group, forming six molecules of G3P. There are now 18 molecules of carbon, all in the six molecules of G3P. The sources of this carbon are three molecules from the intake of CO2 and 15 molecules from three ribulose biphosphates. Since the Calvin cycle only needs to recycle 15 carbon molecules, one G3P is released from the cycle, which can be used in the plant cell. In the ribulose biphosphate regeneration phase, the five molecules of G3P are converted into three molecules of ribulose biphosphate by using three molecules of ATP to undergo complex reactions. In total, nine molecules of ATP and six molecules of NADPH are consumed, which can be regenerated by light reaction. The Calvin cycle is another step in photosynthesis, which converts the carbons and carbon dioxide into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, otherwise known as G3P. Contrary to the catabolic citric acid cycle, the Calvin cycle's anabolic and consumes energy as it builds more complex carbohydrates. There are three major phases in the Calvin cycle, carbon fixation, reduction, and ribulose biphosphate regeneration.